Hey there friends, Jeff Fritz here. And in this episode of our Get Started with .NET Aspire series, we're gonna talk about .NET Aspire integrations. These are components that you can use to create integrations with other systems that you might want to use inside your application system. Now, that might be a database, that might be an API, that might be a service bus. We're gonna take a look at one type of integration and use it inside of our demo that we've been building as part of this video series. Now, if you haven't seen the other videos in this series, I encourage you to check them out because they'll help answer questions like, what is .NET Aspire? How do I install and get started with it on my developer workstation? And how do I get started with the various other parts of the demo project, including service discovery and connecting up some, some simple defaults that we want to be enabled inside of all of our application system. And as we're building our distributed application or our application system in this case, we want to enable things like that service discovery and other integrations like we are here. All of the samples, the slides, and even the instructions for this are available in the Let's Learn Aspire repository on GitHub. There's a link for that in the description just below this video that you can check out and follow along. You can take a look at that documentation and find the fifth entry in the workshop about integrations that we're going to work on today. So we've already got a simple application that we've taken from running Blazor inside of one website and a minimal API in another website, and we now have them talking to each other with some resiliency and some logging using open telemetry. But let's start adding some other integrations into other systems. And in this case, we're going to introduce a Redis cache into our API so that it's saving content inside that cache and doesn't have to keep it in memory or anything like that. So we're going to start building and referencing that Redis integration inside of our app host project. Our app host is that central project where we define and orchestrate the entire distributed application or application system. And we're going to have it um, already have references to the web and API projects. And we're gonna introduce a Redis cache resource that it's going to start interacting with. And we'll do that by adding this command, builder.addredis right there inside of that program CS. So let's grab that. And inside of app host, I'll just define it right here. All right. Now it doesn't, it doesn't know what Redis is. So we have to install a specially crafted NuGet package. That's a package that's been built in the .NET ecosystem. But in this case, it's been adapted so that it contains information about how to connect to a .NET Aspire integration. So I'm going to grab this NuGet package, Aspire hosting Redis. I'll go over to the command line and we'll add a reference to that package. So we'll execute .NET add package aspire.hosting.redis and you'll see I'm doing that in the app host project folder so that it knows about that. It's going to go through and tell me it's downloading and checking for vulnerabilities. And over here now, it knows how to add a reference to Redis. Now, the name of the service is called cache, and the variable that we're using inside this program CS file is called cache as well. Let's make that a little bit clearer that this is my variable name. I'll call it my cache just so that you can see the difference in the two places where the variable name is used versus the string name for the service, cache. Now, I wanna make sure that that Redis cache is exposed into my website. So under the API definition, where we're gonna wire up that Redis output caching, I'm gonna pass a with reference method here and tell it you now know how to connect to the Redis cache. So let's do that. Right here, 
I can say with reference, and it now has a reference to my cache. So just like we saw before when we connected my API to the Weather Hub project so that the Weather website knew how to connect to the API that was defined here, now we're telling the API how to connect to the Redis cache that's going to be created here. And this Redis cache is going to be created with a container. And on my system, I have Docker Desktop installed. So it's going to start up a Docker container and have that running for me in the background. Additionally, I can also tell Redis, hey, it'd be really great if we had the Redis Commander package running as well so that I can inspect and peek into that Redis database and take a look around a little bit. And I can do that with a command here with Redis Commander. I don't have to go and identify the package that I need and install it and get it all wired up so that they can find each other by just adding the with Redis Commander method name there. It will discover, find, load, and connect those two integrations inside of my distributed application here. Let's run the application system and see what happens over there on our dashboard. So here's my dashboard and you can see it's starting the Redis Commander package there. Now it's done and it's running. You see that state reported over there. But there's my cache service and you see it came from Docker IO and it's Redis 7.4 and here's the address that it's running at. And I wouldn't be able to guess that it was running on 62.566 if I wanted to. But my Redis commander is able to find it and connect to it right away and show you here it is running inside of the Aspire system. And we can take a look at everything that's going on inside that Redis cache if we wanted to. Well, okay, so our Redis is running out there and we can look at the logs and we can see all of the logs from the container being reported here. But let's actually now set up our API project so that it uses this Redis cache as its output cache for the API when folks make requests to it. The next step for me to do that is going to be to introduce a NuGet package that has information about the Aspire integration for Redis and knows how to set up the output caching capabilities. And it's this package right here, Aspire Stack Exchange Redis Output Caching. So I will copy the name of that and we'll include this NuGet package in the API project. So I'll do that at the command line because I think it's a little bit easier for everybody to see how to do that interaction. So in the API project, I'll execute .NET add package Aspire Stack Exchange Redis Output Caching. It'll go through, do some investigation, and after it finishes grabbing it, it makes that reference available inside my API project. I'll go back to the app host project here, so I'm ready to run it in just a second. Next, we're going to instruct our API project so that it knows how to connect to the Redis output cache with this command. Builder add Redis output cache. And inside of my API's program CS, I'll just add an entry here. I'll put it right before service defaults. Add Redis output cache. And notice it takes in that string cache, right? That is the name of the cache service that's running inside of our .NET Aspire Managed Distributed Application. So if I go back over to the dashboard, I reran the dashboard at the command line so that we can see what this looks like. That cache string is the name of the cache service right here. It's not the my cache variable that was in app host but it's the name of the service that's declared right here. So it's going to add a reference 
to the cache Redis service and use that for an output cache. Now we're going to go over to the add NWS manager method and we're going to remove the output cache declaration that's over there. And there it is right here on lines 85 through 88. I mean, NWS manager CS inside the API project. You can see exactly where it lives using the uh, breadcrumbs right here. And I can remove this default output caching. And I don't need that anymore because it's been declared over inside of my program CS file. Let's go back and restart our application system and see how things behave now. All right, so there's my dashboard. Nothing new to see here. We can click into the API's details. And if we scroll down inside of there, you'll see there's a connection strings underscore cache entry. And this is the configuration variable that's going to specify where the Redis cache is running. And in this case, it's running at localhost 62704. And there it is at the top in the dashboard. It's running at localhost 62704. Okay. Now my API is going to be cached out to Redis. So when I look at the application and I click through some of these entries, right, the values are going to be output cached to Redis. So when I click back through them, they come back immediately. It doesn't need to go and fetch it again because it already has that value sitting in my Redis cache. And we can see that in our distributed trace over here. If we click into the traces and we scroll down a little bit, we can see where it went to get data from the API. And, and now it gets even more interesting when we look at the trace because we can see where it was getting a forecast for a specific zone and how long that entire request took. But the first thing it did was it checked to see if it was in the Redis cache and it didn't have it. So it went out to API weather gov to go get that data and came back after it got the data and set the value inside the Redis cache. If I go back, we can take a look just a little bit further down and we can see here it went to go get for a specific zone, right? We can see exactly what that zone was that it requested, right? AKZ325, uh, right there. We could see it didn't actually go out to the National Weather Service. It just got the data from our Redis cache. It was cached locally and it was able to return that without that expensive request to go out to the National Weather Service and get the same data that hasn't been updated since the last time it was cached. Really great stuff that we're able to do and enable with very little work inside of our application. Maybe you wanna use a custom Redis container. Maybe you don't wanna use the specific Redis container. Maybe you wanna use Garnet from Microsoft or you wanna use Valkey. You can swap out and specify a different image name and specify a different image tag by using the with image and with image tag methods as part of your API. So if I grab those statements, I can go back to my app host. So here I am, program CS app host, and I'll just drop in here those statements so that it gets the latest Garnet uh, Redis image, and it'll get the latest version of that as well to use. Now, this is the syntax that we previously used. Because we're fetching this container from an alternate registry besides the, the hub docker.com registry, we actually need to change up the syntax just slightly we're going to specify with image registry and we're going to specify that it's coming out of the github container registry and then we can get rid of that part from the front of our with image description let's go restart our application and see how the dashboard looks now i removed the redis commander so that we could get garnet to load here and there it is if we take a look at the logs 
we can see it's Garnet that's running and it's ready to accept connections. So if I go back over to my Weather Hub application, restart it and start clicking through some of these requests, I can see that it's starting to cache and it's using Garnet now to persist that information. I'll go back over to Traces and we can see where it's using that Redis get and Redis set to interact with the Garnet container now inside of my distributed application. There are so many more integrations that are available for you to use, and you can even make your own custom integrations, but that's a little bit further beyond the scope of this video. Check out the documentation online for a full list of the available integrations that have been signed off by the .NET Aspire team that are available publicly. And you can also find some that might be uh, built and organized and shared locally within your organization, within your enterprise. Thanks so much for watching.